We remind ourselves to have taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, O oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah. Ittaqullaha wa kulu qawlan sadida. And speak the most telling true words. What will happen if you do that? Yuslih lakum a'malakum. Allah will perfect your works. Wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum. And forgive your sins. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoso obeys Allah and his messenger has won a mighty triumph. Today's khutbah is about a word that is mentioned frequently in the Qur'an. And it's a word that has become the best practices among the ulama to always mention it and on Friday. And it's a word we just heard now. It's a word that embodies a concept that, as I mentioned, mentioned frequently in the Quran, in the hundreds of times, between 200 to 300 times. And it's connected with all aspects of life. And also connected with Iman, with our hearts, and with the manifestations of Imams and what we do. This word is the word Taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the word Taqwa so many times, frequently. Our ulama tells us that the word Taqwa, asluha wawi. The word Taqwa originally began with wow, not with ta. But through the rules of the Arabic language, it was transformed by the ancient Arabs from wow to tell. So the word taqwa originally was waqwa, from the verb waqa, and from the masdar wiqaya. And the verb ittaqa, asluhu iwtaqa. Originally it was iwtaqa. And then through the rules of assimilation and sarf, it became ittaqa. It's easier to pronounce. What does this word mean? What does the verb mean? And why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention it in the Quran over 250 times? Now what's so special about it? You know when you apply for a job, you have to send your resume. In your resume, you talk about yourself, you talk about your education, you talk about your accomplishments, you talk about your experience, you talk about your publications, if you have any, you talk, talk about so many things. You fill three pages, four pages. If it's a CV, you fill 10 pages, 20 pages. As a Muslim, if you were to have a resume on the day of judgment, you only need one word in that resume. And this word is, you are muttaqi. You have taqwa. Because the word taqwa is a summary of 20 pages. If you were to take a full resume and condense it into one word, what would that word be? Summarizing your life as a Muslim in this word. What would it be? The word taqwa would be a good word. Coupled with Iman, that's all you need. You're in good shape. If you have both, you're in good shape. So the word taqwa comes from waqwa, comes from wiqaya. And the verb ittaqa in the template of the Arabic language is considered the eighth form in sarf, in morphology. Usually the eighth form, this verb, has a connotation that when you do something, it benefits you. It's to your own advantage. But also has another connotation that it implies diligence. It implies continuity and perpetuity. It implies that you're always alert 
you're always aware, you're always conscious. So for example, we say, <coughs> Wikaya is a type of preventative measures. They say dirham Wikaya is better than Tuntaro Ilaj. An ounce of prevention is better than a ton of treatment. To take a precautionary measure is always better than to do corrective measures. Why face a situation when you can avoid it? So when we say, for example, in Arabic, ittaqal matara, a person has avoided the rain. Today is raining. And the brother outside reminded me that it's a blessing. Rain is a blessing. We always need rain. Mercy is like rain. We always need mercy. All we have to do is get a bucket and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill it with mercy. Same thing with rain. All we have to do get the bucket outside and it will be filled with water. So we have to do a step. The first step is from us. When we say, al matara, he shielded himself from rain. He took preventative measures to protect oneself from rain, to their own advantage. So wikaya implies shielding, implies you create a barrier implies that you construct a fortress to protect you to your own advantage. And you do it diligently. It's not just once in a lifetime. We're not part-time Muslims. We're 24-7 Muslims. So this word taqwa now has the connotation that is to restrain it's self-restraint and safeguarding and protecting and building a shield and a barrier between you and anything that could harm you. And that's the first level of taqwa. Taqwa has many levels. Because at the end, at taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is not just manifestations and fruits. There has to be something inside first. As the Prophet ﷺ says, and he pointed to his noble heart, that taqwa has to be here. It's a state. Sometimes this word, it's, it's not easy to translate. Sometimes we see translation like fear, or God's consciousness, or piety. Many translations that may connote either an emotional feeling or an action that one does. But in principle, the taqwa has to be here first, has to be in the heart. The protection you build is in your heart. You put your heart under, under protection. When the heart is under protection, because one can say, well, I can always avoid situations. But that's not how we live our life. We don't always avoid situations. You can always avoid problems. That's the first level of taqwa. The real taqwa is when you're able to face challenges and nothing distracts you. Why? Because your heart in a state of, is in a state of taqwa. Your heart is in a state that nothing can distract it. You don't even need to have a barrier. The barrier is natural. So, So what does it mean then? What does that mean? It seems that taqwa is a prerequisite. And it doesn't only apply to Muslims. You can strip it out of your, of its religious connotations. And sometimes you see people and you say, oh my God, if this guy or this woman was to be a Muslim, she would be a good example of taqwa. Taqwa is the prerequisite for any person who wants to live their life by certain principles. Whether they are religious or not. And nothing distracts them from those principles. 
And they're always building a barrier and a shield between them and any temptation that could distract them from achieving their goals and from those principles. So they have a clear direction and they have a clear goal and they know the geography, they know the map. Islam gave us a map of this world and told us how to navigate it, taught us how to navigate it, gave us guidelines and principles of how to navigate this landscape. <coughs> so in doing so, a person who has taqwa always protect themselves against any transitional desires that are inconsistent with their goals and their principles. That's in the broader sense. It can apply to Muslims, it can apply to non-Muslims. But when we apply it to Muslims, the first level of taqwa is Iman. By becoming a mu'min, you have provided the first shield for yourself. And it's to your own advantage. And you have to do it diligently. And you have a clear goal and a clear direction. And you know where you're going. You know where you're heading. <coughs> In Islam, taqwa would be a quality, it's a state of the heart that allow you to protect yourself from anything that is considered by the religion to be wrong or to be sinful. That's a negative aspect. The positive aspect is that it's a quality in the heart that allows you to naturally live your life as a Muslim to the highest standard. The first level of taqwa is to just avoid sinful situations. That's not too difficult. Stay in your home and don't go outside. But that's not how we live our lives. The second is to be able to go outside your home and to face challenges and remain persistent and remain consistent with yourself and true to your goals. So that's someone who is a muttaqi. Someone who is a muttaqi is in a high state of alertness, but they're not faking it, it's natural. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, one person was asked him, what is taqwa? Can you give me an example of taqwa? He says, taqwa is like you're walking through a very narrow, thorny pathways. You have roses, but they're full of thorns. Or you have thistles, these are type of plants that have sharpie points. So what do you do if you are in a very narrow pathways and it's full of sun? He said, well, I take measures to make sure that my, my clothes don't get caught and don't get ripped by these thorns and thistles. He said, that's taqwa. That's taqwa. That's one level of taqwa. So what happens if you have taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described taqwa in the Quran. He says, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ The garment of taqwa, that is better. Garment usually in the Arabic language is a metaphor for character. It's a metaphor for who you are. You wear a garment that fits you. You wear a garment that protects you. You wear a garment that adorns you, that makes you look good. The best thing that can make you look good, religiously, is taqwa. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. Verily, the most noble in the sight of Allah is the one who has more taqwa. The Prophet ﷺ says, لا فضل لعربيا على أعجمي ولا لأعجمي على عربي إلا بالتقوى. There is no preference of people over other people except by taqwa. So the excellence of taqwa is, is plenty in the Quran. All we have to do is just read 
and apply. And if one has taqwa, Allah waliyul muttaqin. Wallah waliyul muttaqin. In Surah Al Jazeera. And Allah is the ever protecting friend of the God fearing, of those who have taqwa. Wallah yuhibbul muttaqin. And Allah loves those who aspire and who work hard to have taqwa. You fake it until you make it. What happens if I reach that point? In tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqana. If you achieve the level of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon you a decisive life guiding criteria. You will have a criterion that helps you determine which way I should go, what's right from wrong, what's correct from incorrect. By the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have taqwa, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا And whoever has taqwa of Allah, He grants him a way out of every plight. When the ayah was revealed, اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. The companions were agitated. It says have taqwa of Allah as as is his due, as you to the utmost that it can be done. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون and do not die but as Muslims. How can I control my death? How can I control that when I die, I die as a Muslim? And how do I have taqwa? Haqqa tuqati. The companions were agitated. They went to the Prophet ﷺ. said, This ayah, we're doomed. All of us are doomed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Surah Al Jasiyah or in Surah Al Nazar Surah. اتقوا الله ما استطعتم. Have taqwa of Allah to the best of your ability. I.e. the criterion is our human weakness, not the divine virtue. المقياس هو مقياس العبودية لا مقياس الربوبية. It became easy. Have taqwa to the best of your ability. If you want to develop this aspect of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many ways to do it. One of the ways is coming soon, in a few months, Ramadan. It helps promote taqwa. Another way is to apply Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran. Surah Ali Al-Baqarah, the theme of taqwa, the whole theme is taqwa. And these two surahs, they were considered by the companions and the early Muslims to be, if someone applies both Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, they would be considered as kamil, as complete, as insan and kamil. Surah Al-Baqarah focuses on fixing your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outwardly, in your actions. It has 1,000 commands and 1,000 prohibitions. Surah Ali Imran focuses on fixing our relationship with Allah inwardly. Not imani wise, but inwardly as in terms of achieving this state. And if one applies both, they're called as Zahrawan. They're the two beautiful ones. Aqulu